Welcome back my DIY nomads. We are back again and we are sat in a pop top T6 transporter. Um, basically a customer has asked for us to fit a solar panel to the roof so that it doesn't drain their leisure battery that's on board completely flat every time that they stay in a location for longer than a few days. Um, so yeah we're going to be doing that today. Should be a semi easy job. The only sort of tricky thing is uh, the cabling between the pop top and getting it inside the van. Other than that, it's all a very simple job, um, but let's look at a few different options we can go about it. Uh, I've already basically cleaned up this area here, marked out where the panel is gonna go, that's gonna, where it's gonna be. Um, yes, there will be this shade bar created by this roof bar, but there's really nothing we can do about that uh, because the customer needs the roof rack for transporting and stuff like paddle boards. Um, but yeah, so there are, there are a couple ways you can go about this. Uh, one of them is to run the cable on the inside, one of them is to run the cable on the outside. We're going to go for the outside version today. Uh, basically the way that we go about it is that the solar panel will be here. We'd run the cables through a grommet that would take the cables through the fiberglass here um, and then the cable is going to run down here into this gap. Sorry, into this gap here. Um, and we're going to run the cables through these grommets. Well, sorry, I've taken one of the grommets out for now, but through these grommets here and here and then run the cable through the top into the cabinet and into the electrics uh, which are just below this area down here. So there's another way you can go about this and that is to mount your grommet on the top here, um, run the cable on the inside of the fabric so you literally drill a hole bit further back, go through the top in the corner here and then you run it through and it goes straight into the cabinet. Right guys, one cheeky little disclaimer before we get started. If you're fitting any sort of solar panel to your van, anything quite like that at all, remember that as soon as that panel is out of the box, it is working, it is delivering current through those two wires. So you're talking about a live situation. Make sure that um, they usually come with those male and female ends, so they're fine, like as long as you don't plug them into each other. Um, but remember, that it's live. Uh, there's no on-off switch, so you have to be careful at this point. Um, make sure that you take every precaution to prevent any sort of short. Um, just a quick little cheeky warning, but let's get into it. This is the solar panel we've gone for. It's 160 watts, semi-flexible. Um, it's got a self-healing coating. This is from uh, Bimble Solar. Um, they're a UK-based company. Uh, we, we quite like them. Luckily, the metal grommets have no profile on the bottom, so... Um, we're not gonna worry about trying to remove those. Uh, these are usually for marine application, but um, they'll work great for this pop top. To mount the solar panel to the roof, we're using this CT1. Uh, it's actually black, um, but that's not gonna be a problem because you won't really see it. And as you might have seen already, the masking tape is already around the edge, giving about three to five mil gap around the edge of the solar panel. Any excess will go onto that masking tape. We can neaten it up pull the tape away and there'll be a really nice clean edge. So let's get this glue on. Right, that is the adhesive down. Um, I've tried to keep a uniform bead. Uh, you don't want to have like globs here and there that will create high and low points um, that will potentially push your panel away. And I've added the extra lines down the center for more strength, obviously. Um, this little weird bit here is actually to allow air to escape. Um, I don't think you should ever really seal it off fully because um, in a hot and cold country, when you put it down, um, you're always going to have uh, a bit of air under there and if you go to through different climates you're going to want somewhere for the air to go through um, because as it expands and contracts you're going to create pressure behind the panel and if it creates enough pressure it could actually end up damaging your panel um, which is why I've got the glue laid out like this. So it's all stuck down. Actually, the glue pretty much didn't work and it came up 
to the actual edge in a certain few places so that's all right I can see from the grommets it's come very very close to the edge but it's not quite coming out well that's fine that's perfect you know, if anything because uh, seeing a lot less of the black uh, adhesive what I've done next is in the center at the back here I've used a progressive drill bit and I drilled a hole through um, obviously make sure you measure this multiple times and check that you're going to go through in the right spot but I've also countersunk this and because it's fiberglass I'm not going to worry about grommeting this because it's a very smooth soft hole like there's not going to be any rubbing come from, coming from that um, and all I need to do now is stick down the uh, cable grommet. The grommet is the same story as the panel I've uh, taped out, masking taped out the area uh, everything's ready, we've got the glue on the bottom here, the surface is clean. So let's get this on. What I'm going to do now is just sort of wipe away these edges um, and then peel away the tape and make it look all nice. I would say just use your finger but I've come to realize after quite a few times of doing this that it just seems to stay, this stuff is so strong, it just stays in your hands for bloody ages. Um, so I would advise wearing either gloves or wrapping something around your finger before you do it or even using a tool to do it. So let's get cracking. So while I've been waiting for the battery for the camera to charge, I made up this little board. This is just a little bit of ply that I'm going to mount the inside of the cupboard. I'll show you in a second. It's going to be spaced off from the wall, so it sort of almost simulates like a consumer unit where the cables run around the back of the bit of wood and then back into the system to be fused. I've got it basically labelled here. We've got the solar that will go into the top here, come out and into the positive on the uh, MPPT then it comes out, goes behind the plywood board, will come through another fuse and go off to the positive on the battery um, and then the negative will also come in from the solar, the negative cable and I'll feed this down around the back of the plywood come round into the negative of this which will then come out in the negative to the battery. So everything is, is like double fuse from the solar in and also the MPPT out which is great but a really simple setup really really simple nice easy to go and like adding solar really isn't too difficult to add to any camper van conversion and can make such a drastic difference to your life in the van so in this van the battery's down at the bottom there i'm going to be mounting this uh, solar panel to the wall on the inside uh, but here basically so i'll be mounting it in there um, and then i'll be running the solar cables down in this corner through a little hole to my setup and then to the battery all the way from the roof. Now one issue I need to get around is that there's way too much excess cable uh, on the end of this solar panel uh, so I'm going to have to cut off the terminals and then reconnect it with the other end of these cables uh, that are running down the van. Um, I'm going to repeat this again from the start of the video because this solar panel is in any form of light it is already generating current. Please remember that these terminals are live technically so if you do cut the cable firstly don't cut both the cables at the same time because you'll short it between the pliers also once you do cut them very quickly um, tape them off so that there's no chance of shorting out on the metal of the van or any other parts that are metal the cables now run through they come out the bottom and through the fiberglass there and this is where they join. Uh, these are the two longer bits that go into the van. Um, I basically used a uh, crimp joint and then I used some adhesive and then I used some shrink wrap tubing. So those are on there pretty darn well with a bit of excess to play and then they go through these Titan grips. Um, I actually forgot I had these laying around but they're actually designed for solar cabling to mount to the top of the van so we'll see how long those last but you know not too bad if they do come loose but they're just sort of keeping the cable away from hitting this edge all the time of the door. 
One stupid thing I did, I didn't do was I forgot to put the grommets onto the cable before I fed them. So it's not a biggie because the cables are still loose and they're just down here. So I just had to refeed them. And it wasn't too tricky to feed them through into the top of the box there. Um, I need to neaten it all up anyway. So yeah, that's fine. But they'll go through the grommets there. Right guys, this is part of the reason why I also struggled to get the next bit filmed is because this is the door I had to fit through to fit the solar and I'll show you where it is. It is in the back there, so it is all fit. It's a tight squeeze, but still accessible. We still can get to uh, the uh, fuses. So uh, we just need to do a little check, check everything's running properly and then it's back to the customer. It'd be quite interesting to see I understand that obviously with it being stuck to the roof, I, I mean they're designed like that so I'm sure that there's some sort of contingency built in but I mean it's interesting to see them just being able to be stuck straight onto the roof like that because um, the whole thing about solar panels getting hot and losing efficiency. Um, I don't know how well this would these panels would do in a very hot country but it'd be quite interesting to you know get some feedback the guys the owners that use this camper van they travel down to the south of france quite a lot so maybe we can get some proper honest information from them in the future and see how this thing really does over time i'm still letting the uh, grommet properly dry it's not really budging at all it doesn't budge at all but i just don't want this cable putting extra tension on when uh, the grommets are in so i'm letting it dry for as long as possible before actually screwing these in um but really yeah the cable full external cable entry like we're not going into the actual sleeping area the tighten grips are holding up really well um through the two little rubber grommets there which has worked really well as well um i don't ever see those allowing water to ingress um and they should be absolutely fine but yet again it's a matter of time We'll see how uh, everything pans out and I'll keep in touch with the customer to make sure that we've delivered the best possible result for them that we can.